Hey dudes, welcome back to Films Presents RC. Paddy with you here again today. Now I just thought I'd show you this little piece of history from Kiyosho. Uh, this is a 1991 release, uh, Kiyosho 1.8 scale, Ferrari 643. Now this is quite an accurate two scale model. Uh, like I said, it's, it's uh, 1.8. Uh, these were released in quite small numbers. There was a sister model to this, which was uh, exactly the same. But an EP version, as they usually did back in the day, GP and EP, uh, and they also did a Jordan body. Um, these were quite expensive back in the day, six to seven hundred dollars. You know, back in nineteen ninety one, that was a fair chunk of change. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at the setup because it really is an unusual setup on this. So, for starters, we've got an inverted engine. You'll notice straight away. Not dissimilar from the Tractor C Revo, if you'll notice. Uh, we've got inboard shocks, also um, similar to the Tractor C Revo, you'll also notice, and a very similar cantilever system there. I'll just show you these going up. We've also got a brace on these. That's just a pivot point, that. And on the back, we've got some horizontal inverted shocks Zoom as you can barely. and this is on like a PBS style um, lay arm setup if I turn this around you'll notice it has got more unusual features so the first thing I noticed on this which is not the first time I've seen this on the Kiyosho um, but it's the first time that I've seen one actually linked up like this and actually working um, I do have a collection of Kiyoshos, um, now most of them gone sadly, but um, I have had a lot of stuff from around this time period, from around the early 90s, and they have had this, um, I originally thought it was a choke, because obviously it wasn't linked up on the, on the model that I had years ago, um, but it, it's not a choke, and it reminded me this, so if, if I just actuate the servo for you, so up here we've obviously got your linkage to your carb, to open your carb barrel, open. So what it's doing is when it's closed, this here is actually an exhaust restrictor valve. So it's restricting the flow into the manifold here, yeah? So this is closed. So it's almost like having the choke on and the choke comes off as the acceleration comes on. And it reminded me of a conversation I was having recently with a Facebook RC group member. And we were talking about, um, the scavenging effects and whether you could successfully implement a supercharger on a nitro engine, a two-stroke nitro engine, and obviously a four-stroke, you've got the um, the exhaust ports and the intake ports are open at separate times so you can uh, build boost in the chamber, yeah? Um, this, with a two-stroke design, the exhaust port and the uh, intake port are open at the same time so you can't build boost. Uh, in the chamber really so uh, that's why you can make a blown two stroke but it's difficult um, to implement it properly a lot of people will go for something like a reed valve like a snowmobiles can have a, a blown two stroke which is a supercharged two stroke um, which is crank fed but um, they have an exhaust restrictor which is a reed valve system um, not too dissimilar to what some of the fifth scale guys reed systems are running slightly different but uh, same principle if you get me so this is actually uh, so all the way back in 1991 Kiyosho were actually using similar I mean you know that technology has been around for donkey's years so I don't mind saying that but you know see it implemented on a car especially one of this age um, this isn't supercharged, it isn't blown. If you're thinking that here, this isn't a supercharger, I'll get to that in a second. Um, this is just a, a naturally aspirated, non-blown two-stroke um, little glow engine that runs on natural fuels and natural methanol uh, uh, fuel. But this is clearly uh, working in a way to restrict um, the exhaust in its building pressure in the chamber to it so it's running at a higher chamber pressure than a normal nitro two strokes so i'm quite interested to see how that goes really um because it must be running a slight um more pressure slight more pressure anyway because of that exhaust restrictor in there so that's quite cool 
Uh, another interesting feature, which I'm sure you're all dying to know about now, is what the hell is this thing on the side? So, uh, another thing uh, that I've seen with Kiyoshio, I've seen this before with Kiyoshio, but not in this uh, fashion. They did a Barjar field bug in 1992, which had a... Uh, some of you might have had the Barjar field bug. Very odd setup. Um, little nitro, uh, two uh, glow engine, two-stroke monster truck. But... Uh, it had a little uh, rubber band that came up off the, off a crank flywheel pulley that attached to a standalone fan mount here. So it was just almost like a... Um, do you remember those things you used to pull the string on when you were a kid and they used to fly off like a little round saucer ring? It was a tiny one of them and it was on a little pole, almost like a wind turbine that you'd see, um, uh, you know, to create energy. And basically it was just cooling the head of the motor so when the crank spun... It would spin the uh, larger pulley to spin the belt and spin the fan to cool the head. But on this, you'll notice that this is actually feeding off. So the back of the flywheel here is actually got a, um, a pinion, a 32 dp teeth pattern cut into the back of the flywheel itself, which is going onto a lay shaft. You'll notice here there's a corresponding lay shaft gear here. And it goes all the way to the end here and at the end so if i just turn that flywheel you'll notice there's like a ducted fan so it's basically what you find like a jet or a uh, supercharger so that is a ducted box fan there and it's going up and it's channeled it's actually channeled. i mean it's a shame really that they didn't implement that um but i'm assuming if you did implement a blower that powerful you would need a pumped uh, fuel system so i'm assuming it's, ju it's just for cooling in this instance they didn't want to make it that complicated but um i suppose if you wanted to if you wanted to uh, get fancy you could implement that but there we go uh, there's another thing so uh, chassis wise it's an alloy based chassis but you'll notice it's running um canards at the back for airflow See, this has been run, you know, I mean, it's a 1991 release when we're talking almost 20 years old now, aren't we? So, uh, no, um, 30 years old, aren't we? Bloody hell, I feel old. Um, but there we go. Right, so, uh, transmitter-wise, this is actually the original transmitter that came with it, this. So, this is uh, for all the old-school guys out there, for everybody else who joined the hobby recently, thinking, what the fuck is that? Um, this is what we were running on before you guys with your 2.4 gigahertz touchscreen fucking sandwich came out. It was uh, the old Technoplus, you know, before that. This is actually quite a late model in some ways. This was billed as the latest and greatest thing when it came out because it was so modern. Look at that modern case. You know, before that, they looked like uh, similar to um, an old 80s boombox that you'd see on someone's shoulder in the 80s. Uh, they, they were very similar to that. But... Uh, these are quite good units actually to be honest with you they're, they're quite reliable the battery life in them you see on on front here no, no digi meters here look at this we've got a full traffic light spectrum Woo! Uh, but these i think these munched up batteries if you if anybody ran these will remember i think they ran on eight aas yeah look at that aaa bats so they were they were, they were pretty heavy but uh, they weren't too bad to be honest with you 27 millihertz system uh, and you've got the receiver here, which is the matching receiver. You didn't have to be too delicate with them either. You could chuck them about. And, uh, you know, we used to take them out as kids and stuff like that, strap them to our backpack and ride along in the rain and stuff. And they were always all right. You put them in a plastic bag, they were fine. Knocked about and stuff. They're not as uh, delicate as the stuff you get today. Um, right, receiver, I have to tell you what, there's a little treat for you. These are the original um, RX what we used to call crystals back in the day they're actually x -tails, but everybody used to call them crystals i used to call them crystals back in the day still with the original tag on there from mantua models so i don't know if there's anybody out there who used to go in that shop but uh yeah i don't i probably doubt that's still there to be honest that that tag looks like an early 90s tag probably bought at the same time as the car to be honest with you but there you go still with the original price on it 6.99 uh, yeah, the wheels have suffered a little bit, but to be honest with you, if you wanted to, on the backs, you could chamfer the edges, which I know some of you won't like to do. Or if you wanted to spend a bit of time, you could actually close those gaps back up quite successfully, I think, even though they are um, spread apart. You could glue them back together with some time. It's just going to take some time, that's all. I mean, the fronts are actually the worst. 
but it's not gone all the way through. I mean, once again, that is saved. Hey, dudes, little extra treat for you here. Here's the original Kyosho air filter. That's the original unit that would have come with it. Really simple, really cheap design. As you can see, it's just uh, two pieces of plastic, basically, with a hole. And for a tube in the bottom, that feeds straight onto your carb. Like so, with a gasket on top. You can see someone there, whoever's owned this over the years, has done the uh, nice little mod of the dishwasher sponge for an air filter. Very nice indeed. Oh, they have oiled it, so there you go. So that's some saving grace. Uh, to be fair, I used to do that when I was a kid. I used to put some dish sponge on it if I run out of air filter foams and stuff like that. I just put a bit of oil on it and you're fine. Uh, what have we got here? We've also got a nice little nifty mod that someone's done because they're uh, because the clips broke at the top. So instead of letting it ping free, they put that on. That's what I love about uh, buying old lots. You know, you buy these RTRs, you buy the new stuff, and uh, you don't get the story with it. I like the story, you know, this is a 30-year-old RC car there, you know, the people that have had fun with that over the years, quite something, really. Um, so here we go, so let's have a quick nosy in here. I love this, because it's like Christmas. You never know what you're going to quite find. Boom, there you go, straight away. Someone's been having a bit of fun, haven't they? <laughs> Look at that. See if we can zoom in there. Woo, they have melted that out. Nice, you can see the heat damage on that. What else have we got in here? Let's have we've got the remains of a transistor part for radio. Oh, look at the size of that, I love these. The old 35 millihertz, is it? That's off a plane, I'm assuming. I'm assuming that's 35 millihertz. They usually were when they were that size, but look at the size of that, Bob. Boom, you can throw that through a window and put it through. Crazy. I'm used to seeing all this stuff to be honest with you because I've been trading RC for so long, it doesn't really faze me, but I know some of you guys are probably wondering what half of this stuff is. Yeah, there you go, there's 35mHz crystal. So that's come out of that receiver there. What have we got here? Some of the co co propo. Certified silicon shock fluid. I'm not so sure if that's gone so old that the liquid inside has gone that colour. The colour of what I could only describe as tikka masala yellow. <laughs> or whether it's the plastic. Should we find out? Let's have a look. Oh, the moment of truth. What's it going to come out like? Oh, shizzle. It is the oil. The oil's gone. Maybe that's cooking oil. You never know. Could well be cooking oil, couldn't it? A certified cooking oil from Team Lowe's. There you go, you never knew they used to make that. Uh, <laughs> what else have we got? We've got an OS plug, brand new OS plug there, still in its packet. To be fair, these are not like rare. I've seen a lot, I've seen loads of these. They still make them in these packets, I think. I uh, can't see any dates on there. They're usually on a massive strip, you see, they're did, 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 all the way down in a massive strip. In the uh, hobby shop. Oh, look, there's the once soft rubber off the exhaust, off the um, air filter. We've got a bunch of glow igniters. Now, inside here is almost like one 1650 battery, and they're just a rechargeable 1.2 volt, and they would power your. Um, for those, I'm sure many of you already know anyway, but uh, your glow plug. You put your igniter on top of your glow plug, it lights up the little coil down there. Is that a turbo plug? No, it's not, it's just slightly chamfered. I don't know what plug that is, let me see. I can't see, I'll have to hold it to my... Oh, it looks like an Enya plug. Nice plugs, but it's not for a car, that's for a, obviously for a plane. That. There was a plane engine that came with the lot, so there you go. Oh wow, look at this, old school, rent, old school ratchet. Is it working? Is it locked? Oh yeah, there you go. Oh, the ratchet's quite fine on that as well. Nice knurled handle on that, nifty little piece there. What is that, one eighth? Cool. What else have we got in there? More plugs, more plugs. I'll say it's off a transmitter, six channel plane transmitter. 
we've got an old school analogs for Tabas. Oh yeah, look, the old S3003s. I bet that still works though. Looks like someone's had a bit of fun there, it's all melted. Maybe someone's had a crash in a plane, eh? More glow starts. Batteries that look like they were from 1990. And uh, for anybody who doesn't know, this is where we used to uh, put the batteries in there, four AA batteries. So just like your home packs, I mean, they're still kicking these out today. A lot of the cheap RTR Nitro still come with those. Fucking god awful things. What's this then? The new standard performance devices. Oh, it's crystals, isn't it? It's Xtels. See if we can find a date on there. No. I'm from Sonora, California. Cool. Well, thanks for watching, guys. See you again soon.